Hi, my name is Steven. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be talking to you about underrated life skills, best skills to improve your life. At times, fundamental or core skills in our lives can only take us so far. For example, some of these skills could be being a hard worker, learning effectively, and being an excellent communicator. And these skills can focus in and definitely improve our lives and make it better. And overall, they can help us to achieve the goals that we set out in life. However, in today's video, I want to talk about the underrated skills that each of us could learn to improve our lives. They don't necessarily have all the attention that they deserve, but they are nonetheless equal in how they affect our lives. And these skills, if employed properly, can have equal or greater importance than our core skills, making them more of a next level competency skill. As I come to realize that in addition to core skills, some of these underrated skills can really boost and improve our overall well being in life, and perhaps being able to take our lives to the next level with those skills. Because once we reach a certain plateau, our core competency skills can only take us so far before we plateau. We need more skills to get us to the next level. And we might find it difficult to progress unless we have more efficient and different strategies in life. These underrated skills, at least for me, help me to get myself to the next level and not plateau. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about my background, my top underrated skills, and my general thoughts. And before we start, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share with friends, hit that notification bell if you like this content, and let's go. So this focus on underrated skills really started in my late 20s when I was starting to plateau in my growth and development. I've been focusing on my core skills throughout my 20s and I was noticing that I wasn't improving as I got to my late 20s. I started to max out on working hard, being a better communicator and being more detail oriented. And I started to realize that I was doing more of a certain thing and not necessarily getting better at being efficient at it. And I also realized the more I was focusing on core skills, the more I was actually getting burnt out during the process. This was because the bulk of my core skills focused on me putting out work and effort. And I had to dedicate a lot of attention and focus to it or else it just didn't work for me. This focus impacted my career, social life and business that I was building at the time. And quite frankly, by putting so much emphasis on my core skills just wasn't sustainable to me at the time. After consulting with my friends, mentors and reading some self development books, I realized what was the cause of this. I was focusing more on my core skill sets and I was letting my other skills languish. And these languishing skills were more strategic in nature, allowing me to focus on the bigger picture of some things. It was also because I lacked the humility and listening skills required for me to quit the things that just weren't working for me. Realizing this, I started to move away from my core skills and work on my underrepresented skills. And now throughout the last couple of years, working on my underrated and underrepresented skills, it has drastically improved my life. It has boosted my ability to do more, do those things efficiently and with the same a lot of time. And now these skills have become an integral part of my life and how I do things now. So here are my top five underrated life skills. Number one, being strategic. The best underrated skill that I've picked up in my life is how to be strategic in life. Having the ability to think through and plan out your life is a vastly underrated skill. Being strategic has helped me to shape my long-term goals and how to actually hit those goals. And also through the planning exercise, it's helped me to realize what I don't actually wanna do in life rather than just turning the wheel and do them for no reason. Overall, thinking strategically has helped me to save months, if not years, doing something that I might not enjoy in the end. This has really shown up in my overall productivity because I'm more engaged with the things that I actually want to do. The best example of this was joining improv when I first moved to Seattle. After moving to a new city, I really wanted to get out there and create my social network. And I also wanted to get better at dating, so I knew improv was also the key to being able to do that. Joining improv was a great solution to many problems I had at the time. It was because I strategically planned my overall goal that I wanted to hit and what activity would help me to obtain those goals. By taking improv, I was able to kill two birds with one stone. And I also really thought through whether or not I would enjoy improv at all. Because I knew from my theater stage experience that I wasn't necessarily fearful of being in front of the public or crowds. So even if it did tick off the overall goal, I wanted to make sure that I was able to sustain improv for the long term so that I would keep gaining benefits from it. Had I did something just to be social, like social dancing, I don't think I would have enjoyed it for the long term. And if I'd waste my time to pursue something like that, I would have just quit at the end and not enjoyed it. So being strategic and thinking about how you want to shape your life is a vastly underrated skill. For me, it's always paid dividends in the end because I'm able to be efficient in many things. Number two, telling a story. The power of telling a great story to other people cannot be understated. Telling stories can move people emotionally that being logical just cannot. 
and a story can connect and relate to people on a personal level and they'll just be more entranced by you. Stories can be anything about your past self, relationship, or career-wise. It's just something that you can communicate to others that has a narrative and can relate to others about. The better storyteller you are, the better you are to convince other people of doing something. There were multiple times in my life where telling a story was just better than trying to convince people with logic to do something. In those situations, I needed to be persuasive and not railroad logic to them. I've often used mini stories or tidbits about my life to relate to the other person. And through this, I'm able to convince other people of what I want or how I want to do things. It doesn't always work, but more often than not, they're at least listening to you during your story. And this was particularly useful on dates in order for me to relate to that other person. I think the simple tenets of a good story is a beginning, middle, and end and emotionally relating to that other person. It needs to have end goals and motivation that's clear to the listener. With that, they'll be able to follow along your storyline. So I definitely think being a good storyteller is a vastly underrated skill that everyone should learn. The positive impacts of this skill are endless. And number three, listening more. I've always gained the most out of my life when I'm actively listening to others. This applies to almost every aspect of my life that isn't active communication to others. This is because when you're actively listening, your mind is quiet and you're taking in what's coming to you. You are in essence ready to absorb that information and process it into your brain. When you are listening to respond to others, you're not actually listening to other people. In many cases, you just want to hear yourself speak. In my early years, I did this. I thought I was a really good listener, but I was only listening to respond to sound smart. And instead of actively listening to others, I was just listening to respond to others. In the last few years, I've definitely applied active listening more and more in my life. And it's helped me to be more calm and less reactive overall. It's also supercharged my thinking and I'm more thoughtful about my responses to other people. I think what's really hard about active listening is really to take a step back from the conversation and just listen and absorb. You have to be okay with the silence of just listening and not responding to others. And ultimately being okay with not interrupting with your own thoughts and ideas. So actively listening is an underrated skill that I believe will take your overall skills to the next level. And you could make a case that listening in general is a core skill, but active listening is an underrated skill. Number four, losing the battle and winning the war. When you do something in life, you don't always need to win. Sometimes losing a battle can win you the war. Sometimes losing something in the moment can offer you a better future. The simple version is that we all experience setbacks in life. That doesn't mean we lost. It just means that we temporarily lost a battle. We can take the loss, learn from it, and apply it to our future self so that we can ultimately win the war. For example, we can play basketball, lose pickup games, and eventually get better to be a better basketball player. Or going through the process of dating and being rejected over and over until you get better and improve yourself in the process. That way, when you finally meet the one, you're able to hit it out of the park. This skill really focuses on keeping your spirits high in face of short-term defeat. And knowing that this pain is temporary and you'll ultimately get to a better place. For me, my main example in life is when I graduated college in 2009 without a job. I was really lost at the time and I was reaching out to multiple people and companies for any opportunity. And I really didn't know what my future was at the time. All I wanted to do was something in STEM. And after many rejections, both from people and from companies, I was able to find a job. It was just a lab assistant job at a major university, but it gave me the kick that I needed to start my career. I lost many battles coming out of graduating from college, but I ultimately won the war in finding a job. And similar scenarios to this have played out throughout my life that I needed to endure several battles and losses before I ultimately won. Just having the ability to keep your spirits high and not give up can be huge. So a vastly underrated skill is to just keep that in mind, knowing that you can keep battling and someday you'll actually make it. Keep your overall goal in mind don't give up and keep working hard at it. And number five, quitting. Lastly, if things just doesn't work out, you gotta know when to throw in the towel and just quit. Check out my previous video on how to quit, quitting while you're ahead. It goes into more detail on how to prepare yourself to quit something because sometimes there just isn't a point to keep going at something, whether it's boring, easy, or just unchallenging to you from a career perspective. 
Likewise, if you're suffering through something and you poured in a lot of time and effort into it, but it's not going anywhere, it might be time to quit. Sometimes we do things in our lives because we don't know any other way to do it or we're afraid to do something new. And that can put us in a situation where we don't wanna quit and move to something new. Even if that means quitting something can improve our lives in some other capacity. Quitting as I see it can be used as a tool to get ourselves out of situations that we no longer want to be in. And people need to be able to use this underrated skill more in their life. For me, I've quit jobs, hobbies, and people that just weren't right for me in my life. And this is in direct contrast to my younger days in which I would rationalize staying and not do something to change my circumstances. Now I know that quitting gives me space to find something that I enjoy more. It's no longer something quite scary and I employ that tool and skill whenever I can. Quitting is a huge underrated skill because it gives you power and control over your life. You have the power to end things that aren't working for you. This takes away the power from a situation that might have disadvantaged you, like a job offering you a lower salary or people that are toxic and just aren't right for you in the long term. So I think we should all practice more quitting in our lives. Although it can be uncomfortable at times and it does require someone with a belief that quitting is a path to a better future. Although bear in mind that quitting sometimes can be very uncomfortable depending on your situation, but ultimately I think it's a noble goal to pursue. So here are some of my thoughts on underrated skills. There are so many more other underrated skills that I haven't mentioned, but those top five are the ones that impacted me the most. All of those top five underrated skills require some pause and reflection in our lives and really think about where we are and where we want to go with our lives. The reality is that our most impactful skills are the ones that require connection to others because greater impact ties in with greater connection to others. Our impacts in life is proportional to how many people we influence. So any skills that allow you to have more connection with others will always be more impactful. And I do think many of these underrated skills are very hard to pick up and get better at. And they're much harder to get really good at than core skills. Nuanced underrated skills require a different way of learning about them. For me, it was all about repetition and practicing them in real world situations. You can't really practice at quitting or telling a story. You just have to do it. So the best way to practice those underrated skills is to do them in life. So those were my top underrated skills in life. Beyond the core life skills lies a vast amount of underrated skills. But these key underrated skills can take you from an average life to an extraordinary one. And this is because those underrated skills ultimately increase your impact to others around you because they don't primarily focus on yourself, but how you interact and connect with others. By taking your skills to the next level, you can expand your efficiencies and capabilities in life and just be able to hit more goals in life. So I hope you're able to take something away from my experiences with underrated skills from my life and maybe apply an underrated skill or two into your own life. So thank you for watching. Please leave me a comment down below on what is one of your underrated skills and how has that impacted your life? And I'll see you next time.